How's everybody doing? Welcome back to my channel. Today is gonna be a really fun day, super exciting. I'm gonna be doing my client's outer calf and the concept is Dr. Plague. So with that being said, let's get this day started. Let's go. The Plague Doctor, the 17th century. The doctor's costume was designed to protect them from what was thought of as evil smells or bad air. The most striking feature was a bird beak-like mask with crystal glasses. The mask was more than aesthetic and acted as a respirator filled with dried flowers or spices, which the doctor breathed through, protecting them from contagions. Ah, have a seat, my guy. When I was putting together this design, I wanted to make sure that it was gonna flow nicely on the outer calf. So I started customizing ahead of time so I can have something to show to my client on the day of the consultation. A few ideas that I had was putting together Dr. Plague with a rat, maybe with a lantern, uh, a cinematic scene where he was walking through like a lonely village or city. And I also thought about customizing Dr. Plague holding a, a skull, but I felt like that was a little too dark and I didn't expect for my client to like it. When we had the consultation, I showed him all my ideas that I had, and but for some reason, we kept going back to that lantern. I really liked that idea. The only concern that I had was that I was afraid that it was gonna look a little too busy, you know, with the hand holding the lantern, and then we have a background behind the lantern. I was trying to figure out a way to create that contrast, but we really liked the idea, so I ended up coming home and customizing for a few hours. After a few hours of customizing and thinking how I was gonna do it, I realized that it is super complicated to separate that background from that lantern. So I ended up adding color. Once I added that color, I realized this is it. This is gonna look so sick. But the only thing was that my client did say that he only wanted to keep it black and gray. So I was just hoping he was gonna like my idea and uh, I was just hoping he was gonna just let me add the color. Sorry for taking a while. Oh, yeah, all right. Me and Kenny were making a TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't want to. Dude, fucking tell him. I already fucking told him. Well, tell him again. He fucking said no. Well, make him say yes. How you feeling? Good. Excited. It's been a while since I've gotten a tattoo. Really? How long has it been? Well, like last March. Last March? It's yeah, been like almost a year. Yeah, almost a year. Mm, how dare you? <laughs> Wait this long. <laughs> what made you thought of this idea? Honestly, I've wanted it for a while. I just couldn't find anybody that like could do it. Like I asked like my other artist who did, and he's like, I, I don't want to do mm. that. <laughs> so you were looking for like a specific person that was able to execute it. Like how you visualize it. I really it. I like like the photorealistic tattoos. Yes. And I was like, I've been wanting to do this concept for a while too. For a while, I had images saved. I had all of these things. I was just waiting. No, it's perfect. I'm, yeah. I can't, I'm very excited that you're the one doing it. Hell yeah. I didn't think you had a lot of hair, or you, you do. <laughs> I'm so, I would have shaved it, but I was like, I don't know how big oh, no. you were gonna do it. No, you're good. It's gonna take me like two years to grow back. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, it's gonna take so long. <laughs> it's like my, my facial hair. It just, <laughs> yeah, you're telling, you're telling me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you don't have any? Yeah. That's good. I mean, you yeah, have a little I know, yeah. I, I got to shave every few days, I, but I can it's see not a, a little, lot. A little, a little something bit. coming out. Yeah. Me? This is Nothing. me. Really? This is me, 20, 27 years. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, this is like I didn't shave this morning, but like, oh, still. Oh. <laughs> like, what? Mine just stops at like the peach fuzz. Looks like little pubes on my face, oh, so I got to shave it off. Oh, so, <laughs> so you can't grow it. No, like, not at all. I've tried and it's just mm. not going to happen. <laughs> so at this point, I'm would you up. rather have a full beer or no, none, none? Or none? Yeah, none. I'd rather just not have to deal with it. <laughs> Let's put on this stencil then. There we go. First one. That'd be crazy if it actually lands on it to, to cover this up. <laughs> it 
Is it perfect? <laughs> that is like perfect. <laughs> Look at that. It just. It, oh, it's perfect. Like, what? It's oh, funny because yeah. I don't even consider this a cover up. <laughs> this is not considered a cover up. <laughs> this is, it just happened to work out. What are the cool kids doing nowadays? The, like the greedy? <laughs> yeah. What? The greedy? How are they doing it? <laughs> the I don't know. The greedy? Some shit like that? <laughs> Fuck, I sound old. Stop, bro. <laughs> the greedy? You haven't heard of that? The greedy? Like how that? No. The greedy I, I know dance. what you're talking The greedy? Oh, greedy. The greedy dance. I don't know how they do it. They just like kind of <laughs> skip a little it's bit. It's like one of those Indian dances. Yeah, right? Same <laughs> <laughs> <Dang> dance. <laughs> I don't know. Squeezy. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, uh. Uh. How you feeling? Good, I'm excited. That is tired. Huh? <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna have you stand up, make sure you like the placement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean you don't have many options, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I was really happy that my client really liked the idea of putting color behind the lantern to make it stand out. You know, I was very happy because it is not easy to change your, your mind going from strictly black and gray to adding a hint of color. You know, it's a big decision. But I was very thankful that my client trusted me with this choice and this decision on the design. So I was just ready. I was just ready with this design because I customized it specifically to make it fit the outer calf. And I just, I just, I just felt it. It was gonna be a good ass day. So we already put on the stencil here. Um, it landed perfectly where it was supposed to. Uh, nothing was forced. Everything just naturally happened to land on the right area. So that's telling me that it's gonna be a super dope piece. Uh, as far as the bottom here, I'm gonna get started with a little bit of color on the background because the lantern is very black. So it has a whole bunch of contrast and a whole bunch of solid areas. So I definitely want to separate it from the background. Uh, so the background is going to have a little bit of like a bluish turquoise with a little bit of grays to kind of make it look like a, like, you know, a vintage, uh, a vintage piece because it is a very, you know, uh, 17th century kind of uh, theme. As far as the inside of the lantern, we got a little bit of red, orange, yellow to give it that, that illusion that it's lit up. As far as the top, as soon as I reach the hand here, I'm going to start transitioning to my gray onto my black and then all the way on the top is going to be a true gray um, piece. So that way we're going to go from color to gray to solid true gray colors. Um, and I'm going to start from the bottom to the top. My needle selection is going to be, uh, I'm thinking uh, 11 curve mag with a 17 curve mag for the background as far as the details inside of the lantern, lantern, lantern? Lantern? Lantern. It's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be um, 14 round liner and a 14 round shader with a voltage of 5.0. Let's do it. I wanted to start applying my red first before I started mixing with my orange and my brown because I definitely wanted my red to be super bright so it can stand out. 
The reason why I chose an 11 curve mag was because it allows me to really pack it in faster, I cause less irritation on the skin and I can move faster between colors. At this moment, I decided to start mixing my orange and my red to start slowly transitioning to my orange and create that effect that is getting brighter. Now that I'm done with my bright colors, I can start mixing it with my brown. The reason why I did it this way it is because I feel super comfortable going from my dark color to my bright colors. But it really all depends on the piece that I'm doing, the contrast that it has. Sometimes I'll go from my dark colors to my bright colors. But it is not the only way to execute it, it is what you feel comfortable with. Now I'm ready to start applying my yellow. I am using a new cartridge because I didn't want to contaminate my yellow with my orange, my reds, or my browns. I wanted my yellow to be extremely bright. For all the artists who haven't packed in yellow, please do not be alarmed if the yellow starts looking orange, it is totally normal, it is the yellow mixing with the plasma, let the skin settle and at the end of the session you're going to be able to see a bright yellow, but don't panic, do not panic. And here what I'm doing, I grab the cartridge that I was using to do my background and do my turquoise and my grays and I'm using that same needle to create that depth on the inside of the lantern and give it those reflections. Thank you. 
and to finish it off now all i'm doing is just filling in those gaps that i left open for me to apply my orange and my yellows and create that effect that it is glowing when I was finally done with the lantern, I was really happy to see the way it turned out because I was able to separate the background from the lantern and it just looks so bright, so, so bright. The yellows, the orange, the turquoise. So now that I'm about to start the background of Dr. Plague and Dr. Plague, I'm gonna go so dark because I wanted to, I wanna, I wanna make sure that that lantern looks bright you know and adding more contrast on the top is just gonna make the bottom look even brighter now that i have the lantern looking sick all i gotta do now is finish it Thank you so much for coming back and watching this new video. This piece was fun. I mean, from bottom to top, it was just such a fun piece. It had hints of color. It has a whole bunch of detail, a whole bunch of contrast, texture, highlights. Oh man, I, I was just happy to be able to do this piece, you know, and my client was extremely happy. We're gonna continue adding more projects. That was his first tattoo that he got done by me. So we are already thinking about the future. We are already thinking about adding on the inner, the outer, starting the next leg. Oh, so with that being said, if you're a tattoo artist, I hope you learned something from this video. And if you're a tattoo enthusiast, I hope we were entertained. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Peace. Wait, I forgot. I got some big announcements. I am actually going to be in Florida in June 9, 10, and 11th. And June 11th, that Sunday, I will be giving a one-day seminar, cover-up masterclass. And I am excited because it's going to be a super dope event and I'm just so happy that I'm going to be part of it. So if you are interested in joining that one-day masterclass cover-up seminar, make sure to visit my website, purchase your ticket, and yeah, make sure to reserve your seat ahead of time because I'm going to have limited amount of seats and I'm going to be tattooing live, explaining my process, and I'm going to be helping everybody out to really understand the process of a cover-up. So if you're interested, head up to my head up, uh, uh, head to my website, purchase your ticket, and I will be seeing you very soon in a few months. Peace.